Last year, I made a video about how to make your first solar character for Exalted 3rd Edition. Now, when the Dragonblooded PDF is coming out, I think that a follow-up video is in store, but this time for a new Dragonblooded character. This is the Pattern Spider, a YouTube channel about roleplaying, and this video goes through the entire character creation process and writes up a complete example character that you can use yourself if you want to. The character will be a Dragonblooded Dynast using only material from the Dragonblooded book and, if needed, the Exalted 3rd Edition core book. What separates Dragonbloods from Solars is that standard Dragonblood characters start at Essence 2. Dragonbloods exalt young, and many are tutored for years in one of the realm's many schools. If you want to play a younger Essence 1 Dragonblooded, maybe for a secondary school game, you can absolutely do that. In this video I'm going to make two variations of the same character. I'll start by making an Essence 1 character, and then I'll upgrade it to an Essence 2 post-graduation character. This will be a dynast from one of the great houses. Just like when we made our solar, there are 8 steps to character creation. These are concept and aspect, attributes, abilities, merits, charms, intimacies, bonus points, and finishing touches. I'll go through all of them in order, starting with concept and aspect. First, you need to think about what type of character you want to play. What's their origin, personality, skills, and what playstyle do you favor? If they are from the realm, you should decide whether they are a dynast or a lost egg. Which great house do they belong to, and which secondary school do they attend? The Dragonblooded book also lets you choose to play a Lukshai Sion, a member of one of the Prasada clans, or as one of the outcasts. After we have settled on a concept, we are going to pick the character's aspect. There are five different aspects, each one associated with a distinct element – air, earth, fire, water and wood. The chosen aspect reflects how the associated element influences the character's personality and skills. Exalting as an air aspect often leads a dragonblood to take on a new perspective, as she sees creation with a bird's eye view. Air aspects are often inspired by lofty idealism and boundless creativity. Exalting as an earth aspect tends to imbue you with stoic calm and enduring stability. These dragonbloods stand firm in body, mind and soul, enduring the waves of adversity without bending or breaking. Exalting as a fire aspect intensifies your feelings and emotions, kindling the flames of passion and even the stoniest hearts. Overflown by passions, these dragonblooded cut down foes with deft grace or brutal force. Exalting as a water aspect suffuses the dragonblooded with mercurial adaptability, teaching them to see things from new perspectives. They learn to navigate seas and bureaucracies with equal ease, unstymed by seemingly insurmountable obstacles. Finally, exalting as a wood aspect is to blossom with sensuality, letting you develop a newfound appreciation for each and every experience. These Dragonbloods pursue this sensuality in every part of life, letting every experience, both good and bad, teach them about themselves and the world around them. I've decided to make my character a wood aspect from House Ledal. I want a martial artist who deals a lot with spirits, but who's more interested in befriending them and earning favors from them than she is representing the Maculate Faith. I want her to be more of a free-spirited warrior witch than a monk, like if Princess Mononoke served the realm. When we made our solar character last year, I told you that we didn't need to know much about the setting in order to make a working character with a working concept. However, as I've chosen to play a dynast of the realm, there are a few things I want to know now as a first player. For example, who are House Ledal? I chose that house for a reason, didn't I? How much do I really need to know about them to play a member of that house? If we have a conversation with our storyteller here, hardly anything. I think it's worth noting at least some details to make it easier portraying a Ledal, such that it's a house that's known for loyalty, brilliance and peerless vigilance, but that can raise some eyebrows because of a curiosity to delve into mysteries and lore. They are a house that sees themselves as guardians of the realm against the wild and the anathema, and they can get frustrated with other houses who don't seem to recognize the severity of some threats that are clear to them. My character won't be interested in politics and economics, so I don't bother I don't bother much with reading up on those particular house details. I think that a curiosity for the unknown is something that speaks to my character though, with her fascination for spirits, appreciation of nature and an eagerness to explore. 
If the storyteller has planned a game with little political intrigue, then choosing a house can act more as a face than as a function. If you're not going to involve yourselves in house politics much in your dragon-blooded game, then you don't need to know much at all about the setting surrounding your chosen house. It's important to talk to your storyteller about both their expectations and yours. So, I've chosen to play Ledal Torkova of the Wood Aspect. She's a warrior trained in the House of Bells, but she's specialized in guerrilla tactics using nature to her advantage. She's the kind of warrior who leads smaller squads into deep jungles, where she makes deals with spirits to earn their boons and have them help her set up traps she can use against the enemies of the realm. She's also going to have a familiar named Kuma that's a black tiger with red stripes. This character concept is actually based on an NPC I had go up against one of my Dragonblooded players in a solo flashback game about his graduation from the House of Bells. I'll probably talk about this at some point in a future roleplaying journal. Now we need to pick the character's attributes. There are nine in total, all divided into three categories. The physical attributes consist of strength, dexterity and stamina. The social attributes consist of charisma, manipulation and appearance, and the mental attributes consist of perception, intelligence and wits. Each attribute ranges from 1 to 5 dots and has a single free dot from the start. At this step, we're supposed to decide which category is primary, which is secondary and which is tertiary. We then proceed to divide 8, 6 and 4 dots between them. Like I mentioned in the solar video, I personally find it easier to start out by dividing four dots in all categories before increasing in those I want to improve in. For Ledal Torkova, I'll start by selecting Strength 2, Dexterity 3 and Stamina 2. Since she's trained in the House of Bells, I expect these to increase later. Among the social traits, I pick Charisma 3, Manipulation 2 and Appearance 2. She's fairly balanced socially, but she builds most of her relationships on honesty. And that's why I decided to let her favor Charisma. For her mental traits, I pick Perception 2, Intelligence 2, and Wits 3. She's clever and quick to act, a good strategist. Now, when we're distributed 4 dots in every category, I want to upgrade 2 of these categories to 6 dots. Because she's a trained soldier, I start by increasing Dexterity to 4 and Stamina to 3. Because she works with soldier spirits and animals, I want to increase her social traits as well. I increase her Charisma to 4 and her Appearance to 3. The mental traits are left alone for now. Having done this, we need to choose her primary attributes. I decide to bump her strength up to 3 and her dexterity to 5 before finishing her attributes. We now have a physically fit warrior with strength 3, dexterity 5 and stamina 3. She's a charismatic leader with charisma 4, manipulation 2 and appearance 3. She's also a balanced mind with perception 2, intelligence 2 and wits 3. I'm happy with most of this, but would consider maybe increasing our intelligence to 3 in the future. We'll have to see if there are bonus points over for that in a later step. While this Solar Exalted had more freedom with choosing cast abilities from a selection of 8, Dragonblooded will have to settle with the 5 abilities that are presented as Aspect abilities. Air Aspects have Linguistics, Lore, Occult, Stealth and Throne. Earth Aspects have Awareness, Craft, Integrity, Resistance and War. Fire aspects have athletics, dodge, melee, presence, and socialize. Water aspects have brawl as well as martial arts, bureaucracy, investigation, larceny, and sale. And finally, our own aspect, the wood aspect, has archery, medicine, performance, ride, and survival. We mark the wood aspect abilities as our cost abilities, and then proceed to freely select five more favored abilities. I'm going to need a cult to represent my interest in spirits. Brawl and martial arts will be needed to later get wood dragon style, which I want to use as my main combat style. I want, I want war because she is trained as a soldier. I also want socialize to reflect her social finesse when dealing with spirits. Finally, I want integrity because I expect those spirits to want to try to manipulate her back. Abilities all start at zero, and having picked all cast and favored ones, we're going to divide 28 dots among them. All of the favored abilities must have at least one dot. I'll proceed to distribute one dot in all traits that I feel I should have some basic competence in. These are linguistics, lore, occult, stealth, awareness, integrity, resistance, war, athletics, presence, socialized brawl, martial arts, investigation, archery, performance and survival. This is a very wide spread, which isn't perhaps what I'd fully recommend to all newer players. I do feel that dynasts raised and educated in the realm should have wide competences though. 
and a personal favor Dragonblood characters that have perhaps fewer highly rated traits, but many low rated ones. I've spent 17 points already though, and need to specialize with my remaining 11. I decide to increase Occult to 3, Integrity and War to 2, Athletics and Socialize to 2, Martial Arts to 3, Archery to 2, and Survival to 3. These are a total 28 points spent. Looking over my abilities now, I realize that there are a few of which I want to increase later with bonus points. I think that the best thing I can do is to take note of which charms I'm interested in later and see if I need to increase any abilities to match those. But now we need to select three specialties and abilities we have at least one dot in. Dragonblooded also get additional specialties based on their background, but Young Essence 1 characters don't. We're not going to bother with those just now and instead come back to them when we decide to upgrade this character later. When choosing my three specialties, I want to make sure that they reflect my character concepts well. It's easy to just add them to combat traits in order to optimize, but I don't want to do that. I want to reflect my three main themes, spirits, nature and war. Since specialties actually add to Dragonblood the dice caps, I recognize that there's an incentive to use them to optimize, and I'm not going to say that you shouldn't. I personally don't want to go that route though, and decide to add one specialty for gods to socialize, one specialty for training beasts to survival, and one specialty for forest tactics to war. Solars had 10 points to spend on merits. Because Dragonbloods have a more developed infrastructure, and they are privileged compared to many other Excel types, they have more. Dragonbloods have 13 points of merits as a base, with 5 more if you belong to the Scarlet Dynasty, Presaud's Dragoncast, or Luxai's Gentis, that's reserved for backing, command, contacts, followers, influence, language, resources, or retainers. Since we're playing a young Dragonblood, we get 10 merits and no bonus ones from our background. So we'll settle with 10 for now and add more later when we'll upgrade the character. There are two new merits in the Dragonblood book, Sobriquet and Wellbred. The first one is an upgrade to the influence merit that represents someone with a name that carries weight. The other represents the child of a strong bloodline. I don't see either as a good fit for Torkova and will select all of her merits from the core book. There are a few things I've already established as important for a character concept. I want Torkova to be a martial artist, which requires the martial artist merit for 4 points. It's got Brawl 1 as a prerequisite, which I've already selected in the previous step. With this merit, we can finally confirm that her martial arts score represents Wood Dragon style, which exists in the Dragon Blooded book. I also wanted her to have a familiar. Kuma will be modeled after a great cat, which fits a 2 dot familiar. That leaves us 4 points. I don't think we need to give her an artifact at this point, since she's still in secondary school. Maybe that's something she receives as a graduation gift later for when we upgrade her. Since she's going to interact with spirits, I think it would make sense for her to be trained in Old Realm. Her native tongue is High Realm and will add Old Realm as a language for one point. Because she spends much time in the wilderness, one dot on direction sense will help her navigate better. We also picture her as uh, tirelessly trekking across vast distances to set up ambushes or survey a landscape. With the remaining two dots, I'm placing them in boundless entrance. Now I've spent her initial ten dots. Since she's still a student at this time, I chose not to invest in any resources or influence because I feel like that's something she'll get later when we upgrade her. My personal philosophy when it comes to choosing merits is to select them in three phases. First, select obligatory character concept merits that you just need to have to make your character unique. Second, select the additional stuff that you feel makes sense for your character to round out your concept and to help build a clearer picture of the character in your mind. Finally, get the optimization stuff, the extra dots, the stuff that gives you bonuses and that you can afford. Some players are going to get the bonuses first, but I prefer to get the character stuff first because I favor building a character based on an existing concept before building a concept as you create a character. There is no right or wrong here, only personal taste. There's a new flaw added to the Dragonblooded book as well, Thinblooded, for Dragonbloods whose pedigree is diluted by mortal blood. I don't think that flaw will fit Torkova since she's meant to be an appreciated scion of her house. Flaws are optional, but I do enjoy having characters with them, and I think I'm going to make 
up my own for Turkova based on the wild mutant flaw from the core book. When Turkova was a child, she was kidnapped by a demon bound to a house Ragara sorcerer who had made an enemy of her mother. Her older siblings were sent out after her and they managed to save her before the demon could deliver her to its master. However, her siblings were naive and arrogant and they took unnecessary risks that put Turkova's life in danger. She did come home, but the demon's claws had scarred her face. She now covers her face with a wooden mask, since revealing the scarred face imposes a minus three penalty to social interactions with strangers. When we did the solar last year, I told you that there were 775 solar charms, 108 martial arts charms, 24 spells and 48 evocations in the core book. In the Dragonblood book we have 535 charms, 87 martial arts charms as part of 8 new styles, 10 new terrestrial spells and 64 evocations as part of 11 new artifacts. But he also said in the other video that despite the many ways to customize your character, it doesn't have to be as daunting as it looks. We're limited to Essence 1 now, so we won't even read any of the higher Essence powers at this stage. Before you start looking at charms, you should have a clear picture of the kind of character you want to play. I've already established with Torkova that I'm interested in martial arts, occult and survival, which is why I'll favor charms from those abilities before anything else for now. Just like when selecting attributes, I find it helpful to categorize charm selections by primary, secondary and tertiary ability choices. We don't have a supernal ability like Solars do, but we have an idea of which ability or abilities we're going to want to rank highest. A standard Dragonblood has 15 charms and 5 excellences. A young Dragonblood has 10 charms and 5 excellences. I'm going to start selecting the excellences. Become the Hammer lets Torkova add dice to Brawl and Martial Arts, which will be needed for Wood Dragon style. Hidden Secrets Whisper lets her add dice to Occult rolls. Ration Enhancing Method lets her add dice to Survival rolls. Now we have excellences for our main 3 traits, so we're going to move on to secondary traits. Unobstructed Hunter's Aim lets her add dice to Archery rolls, which acts as a secondary combat ability. Finally, Tactics Mean Everything lets her add dice to War rolls, which will be important for Solio. Now when we've selected our Excellences, it's time to start selecting Charms. I'm going to start out by going straight to Wood Dragon style and see what I can get from there. I'm going to want the Form Charm for when the character is complete, but I cannot get that as a Jungling at SS1. Uh, she's only just starting her martial arts training by now, so I'll take the charms that I can get. These are Wood Dragon Vitality, which lets her increase her soak against withering attacks or subtract dice from the size of ones. I'm also taking Eyes of the Wood Dragon, which lets her add perception to withering attacks. I only have perception 2 for now, and this charm makes me interested in perhaps increasing it in the future. I can't get any more Wood Dragon charms for now, so I'm going to proceed to other charms. Because I'm going to interact with spirits, I decide to take Spirit Detecting Mirror Technique. It'll be needed to perceive them if dematerialized. Spirit Grounding Shout lets me use any combat ability to actually strike a spirit. Finally, Secret Wind Revelation makes it so that the storyteller must inform me if there are dematerialized spirits nearby. I think these three occult charms are a good base for a character interested in negotiating with spirits. We have five more charms to get. We were also going to invest in survival, so I decided to take Quarry Revelation technique to help with tracking. Beast Taming Aspect will help her become better at training animals. Finally, Animal Empathy technique makes her better at communicating with animals. Now we have two more shops to get. I feel like I need to think more about survivability now. I have means of communicating with spirits even if I don't have any shops that actually make me better, better at communicating. I got charms to help me out in forests and with animals, and I'm not in a rush to get more there. However, with only two wood dragon charms, I still don't feel like a competent soldier. I decide to invest in sky calming draw and death from nowhere to improve my archery. Since I only have archery 2 for now, I note that I'll have to invest bonus points to increase it in a later step, so that I can use death from nowhere, which requires archery 3. Now I have some basic survivability, and I have some charms that fit my character concepts. I'm ready to move on to the next step. 
The next step of character creation is to determine the character's intimacies. I usually do this at the finishing touches stage, since especially intimacies usually require more careful thought. Intimacies determine the ties and principles of your character. What does your character care about? What are the codes they live by? You need at least four intimacies. One defining, one major, one negative and one positive. You can choose more if you want to. I'm going to start with these four now and add more after I'm done with everything else. My defining intimacy must be what Turkova cares about the most in life. What's her greatest passion? It's something that's more closely tied to her own curiosities about the world than any loyalties or ideologies she may have. I think her defining intimacy is going to be the principle the world is a beautiful treasure. As for her major intimacy, I want to make this more political. It's a major tie for House Ledal, proud kinship. As for her negative intimacy, I think it would be a good idea to connect this to the part of her backstory that we established when selecting her flaw. She was once kidnapped by a Ragara sorcerer. While she's not the kind of person who'd hate all of House Ragara for the actions of a single sorcerer, her interaction with a demon is one of her earliest memories. She's got a negative major tie that's demon's fear. Finally, her fourth intimacy is positive. It's associated with her familiar. It's a major tie. Kuma, trusted friendship. I don't have any minor intimacies yet as of now, but we'll add more before the character is done. A standard Dragonblood character has 18 bonus points to round out their character with. An SS1 jungling has 15. We'll start by using this 15 for now. The first thing I'd like to do when spending bonus points is to see what abilities I feel compelled to increase. It'll cost one bonus point to increase a cast or favored ability and two points to increase another ability. I want to start by increasing martial arts and archery to four for a total of three bonus points. Because of her interest in spirits, I want to increase her performance to two for one bonus point to represent her ability to perform ritual ceremonies and prayers. I want to increase her Socialize and War to 3 for 2 bonus points. Now I've spent a total of 6 bonus points and have 9 to go. I spoke earlier about wanting to increase Intelligence to 3 and maybe even Perception. Since both are tertiary attributes, it would cost 3 bonus points to increase each. I decide to spend 6 points to increase both traits to 3, giving me 3 in all mental attributes. Now I have 3 points left to spend. I decide to invest all of them in additional abilities, increasing both Archer and Martial Arts to 5 and Survival to 4. Now we're at the end stage of character creation, and while we still have to upgrade our character from Essence 1 to Essence 2 later, our Essence 1 House of Bell student is almost done. I'll note that Torkova has Essence 1, a pool of 12 Personal Essence, a pool of 27 Peripheral Essence, 5 willpower and 7 standard health levels, which means that she's got 1 minus 0 level, 2 minus 1 levels, 2 minus 2 levels, 1 minus 4 level, and 1 incapacitated level. Her natural soak is equal to her stamina, which is 3. Resolve is determined by half of wits plus integrity rounded up, which in my case is 3. Guile is half of manipulation plus socialize rounded up, which in Torkova's case is also 3. My rush pool is equal to dexterity plus athletics, which is 7, and disengage is equal to dexterity plus dodge, which is 5. I have an evasion score that's equal to half my dexterity plus dodge, rounded up, which is 3, and a parry score that's equal to half my dexterity plus martial arts, rounded up, which is 5. My join battle score is equal to wits plus awareness, which is 4. At this point, I also take note of certain equipment I want my character to have. Since she's a wood dragon stylist, she can use light armor. I'll give her a standard buff jacket with, which increases her soak by 3 to a total of 6. What's interesting about wood dragon stylist is that they can use bows in close combat. I'll give her longbow, which is a medium archer weapon. But I'll also note traits of a staff, which is a medium melee weapon, because her martial arts will use her bow as a staff. The idea is that she'll use archery charms to fight at range and then go into wood dragon up close. If I get her an artifact bow later, I'll also have to make sure that her staff traits become artifact staff traits to represent that. 
If we later decide to create our own avocations for an artifact bow, her use of wood dragon style could even let her awaken close combat avocations from her artifact bow to use with wood dragon. It seems like a versatile and fun combat style. If you want more starting equipment than weapons and armor, this is a good time to sit down with the storyteller and talk about details like that. Before we complete this character, I also make sure to note down the character's anima powers as determined by her wood aspect. For 5 modes, she becomes immune to mundane plant-based poisons and gains a greater tolerance for other poisons and diseases. For 3 modes, she can ignore one penalty to invasion or essence penalties to movement actions. Finally, her anima flux is laced with a toxin. A, dragon a dragon-blooded anima flux activates when they reach bonfire level of anima display. This lets the character roll one die of withering damage against all non-dragon bloods within close range, including allies, at the start of each turn. Crashed characters suffer decisive damage instead. As a wood aspect, this will poison people who are too close to her when she erupts. We can also note some details at this point about how our anima looks when it erupts into an iconic display. For Torkova, green spiritual wisps are incorporated into her anima display, making it seem like she's being embraced by the spirits of nature. Now, if we were going to play a young Dragonblood, we would be done now minus a few extra intimacies to round her out, and the next step would be to actually play the game. I think we've got a solid character here that could prove fun to play in a House of Bells game. Even if that wasn't the purpose, I'd probably save this character sheet just in case we'd ever get to play a flashback game from a youth. I'm still running the Dragonblood campaign I started for my players after the Kickstarter last year, and I had all players make young versions of their characters so that we could play individual flashback scenes to help add to their background stories. I think that all characters gained interesting story hooks from these flashback scenes that either have or will come to play in game. To upgrade our character, we first increase her essence from 1 to 2. This will also increase her personal essence pool from 12 to 13, and her peripheral essence pool from 27 to 31. We'll start by adding bonus specialties from the character's background. Since she went to the House of Bells, we need to add two specialties from either Archery, Melee or War. I've already selected a War specialty in Forest Tactics. I'm actually going to retcon that specialty and suggest that it comes from one of these background specialties instead. With Forest Tactics as part of her House of Bells war training, I'm instead adding an Occult specialty for Gods. Her second House of Bells specialty is going to be Archery Foliage, giving her an extra die when using Archery in the thick forests where her vision may be obscured. As for her merits, we get to freely add 3 merits, and then add another 5 merits associated with Scarlet Dynasty. As for the free 3, I'm using those to get the 3 dot power bow of Green Jade. I'll toss the longbow from earlier and replace its traits with powerbow traits, and the staff traits with artifact staff traits. This powerbow was given to Torkova by her parents upon her graduation from the House of Bells. It's an heirloom that was used by her mother in her youth. As for the remaining 5 dynasty merits, I'm going to give her a typical dynastic stipend that's represented by resources 3. She doesn't have much influence yet, and neither does she have much political interest. Instead, I'll use her remaining 2 points to give her command 2. This would normally give her a military force of size 3, might 0 and aver average drill. I'm going to reduce the size to 2, but give them elite drill. This unit is a scale of specialist paramilitary soldiers under her command. Since her gra graduation from the House of Bells, she's been scalored for this band on missions in the Eastern Threshold. To represent this, I'm spending one bonus point to give her Forest Tongue and another bonus point to give her River Speak. We have five more charms to choose now, and we can select Essence 2 charms. I decide to jump straight back to Wood Dragon style to get that form charm now. First, Mind Over Body Meditation lets her heal herself on Wounded. Soul Marking style lets her make a scene long aim at the target she's wounded in battle. And finally, Wood Dragon Form gives her extra health levels in combat and incapacitating enemies resets mind over body meditation so that she can use it more often. That's three charms chosen with two more to go. I still haven't made any investments in her social strengths, and I think now would be a good time for that. I'll get Locatius Courtier Technique, which is the socialize excellency, as well as Friend to All Nations Attitude, which will help her ingratiate herself with foreign cultures something that will be useful both in the thresholds and in political place back home. 
With only one bonus point left to spend, I decided to add a specialty to martial arts called Bestial Flank. This will represent moments when Torkova and her familiar are both fighting the same opponent. Having trained to fight alongside her cat, she knows how to coordinate her attacks with it. That's it. This is Ledal Torkova, both as a teenager and as an adult. It was a longer video and I thank you for sitting through it. I hope that it gave you some tips and tricks on how to approach creating your own Dragonblooded character. If you want to play as Ledal Tur Turkova, you're absolutely welcome to do so as well. Now when we had a Lunar Kickstarter as well. I know that many of you are more interested in making Lunar characters than Dragonblood characters. I see this video as a celebration of the fact that the Dragonblood book is finally coming out for non-backers to purchase. And I'll probably hold off on making a Lunar character creation video until that book's coming out as well. Much can change in the Lunar development process as well that would risk rendering an early video obsolete by changed material. If you enjoyed watching this video, make sure to watch my other Exalted videos as well, including the Solar video from last year. Don't forget to like, subscribe and comment below. Share this video on social media and make sure that more people learn about Exalted. Until next time, see you in creation.